Hi, Simon Shooker here. Although I always include written instructions on how to solve my co-cracker puzzles, a couple of people have asked me if I can provide a short video as well. So, here we go. I thought the best method would be for me to just solve one from start to finish. In this case, it's the first puzzle in the book Simon Shooker's Co-Cracker Volume 1, so I suppose if you've got the book, you can follow along. I apologise in advance for my messy handwriting. If you're unfamiliar with my co-cracker puzzles, they look like standard crossword puzzles, except there aren't any clues. Instead, every square in the main puzzle grid contains a number from 1 to 26, with each number representing a different letter of the alphabet. You're always given one or two letters to get you started. Here you can see a W and a D in the control or solution grid under the puzzle, which in this case are represented by the numbers 8 and 18. Of course, that probably won't be the case in the next puzzle. So, I'll start by entering those two letters into the grid. In every square with the number 8, I'll put a W, then a D in every square with the number 18. Now to look for a position where a word can be completed. This is the starter word or keyword, and my co-cracker puzzles all begin with a unique keyword or combination of keywords. I try to make the keywords more obvious by using the start letters in as few places as possible. And because you don't have crossword clues for context, I avoid using proper nouns or particularly uncommon words. In this case, you'll see that the keyword is a five-letter word ending in D, with the W as its second letter. Well, quite a few words fit that description, including sword and award. If you look at the two numbers between W and D, you'll see they're the same, two sixteens. Now, I can't make any words which have two matching consonants there, so there must be vowels. And whenever we have doubled up vowels in the English language, they're almost always two E's or two O's. Although an O won't work here, if you try an E, you'll find you can get only one word. Tweed. So I now have two more letters. I'll enter T and E under 7 and 16 in the answer grid, and also cross T, W, E and D off the alphabet printed beneath the grid. You don't always have to do this, but when you're starting out it does help to keep track of which letters you have left to find. Now I'll fill the T's and E's into the grid, and look for the next word in the trail. When putting letters into the puzzle grid, don't get too concerned if you skip one or two of the numbers. It happens to everyone. But, if you find yourself in a dead end, it is worth double checking to see if you've missed writing a letter that you've already found. This word could be the next word in the trail, but the correct option isn't immediately obvious, as either title or tithe would work here. One strategy would be to say that whichever one it is, you definitely know the letter I, so enter that and see where it takes you. Or, go here, because this word can only be steed, so 21 is S. Once again, I'll put my new letter into the appropriate squares in the main and solution grid, and cross it off the alphabet list. So dates in the bottom left gives us the next letter, A. Of course there isn't just one way to solve a co-cracker puzzle. You might fill in words in a different order than I'm doing here, or use a completely different method. I even know of some readers who completely ignore the start letters, and treat the puzzle as a pure co-breaking exercise. But this path method is the way I write the puzzles, and it's the way I solve them. This word must be statements, so we get two more letters, M and N. Obviously in this video I've used the magic of editing to speed up everything considerably. In reality, I took quite a few more thoughtful pauses than is shown here. There's a few places you could go from here. For instance, that word could be either snakes or snares, but I don't see an obvious next word which would quickly rule out either K or R. For instance, if 19 is K, the bottom right word could be speak, but an R would work there too, giving you share or spare. Uh, instead, I think the next word is this one. Once again, we have a doubled vowel, and as I've already used E, this time it's O. Giving me moonbeam. That means this word must be emblazoned. So this word was title, not tithe. Filling in all our eyes makes flotilla pretty obvious. Rifle and ram in the top left corner gives us R. Now that R is out of the picture, 
19 must be K. So in goes snakes and bake. Yak gives us a Y, which makes this word here travesty. And now we've almost finished the puzzle. Gallon, twang and frog give us the letter G. And as B has already gone, this word is definitely axle rather than able. Checking a small selection of non-crossed out letters remaining in the alphabet, these words must be speak and write. while granule and lump give us our remaining vowel. This top word could still be hug or jug, so I'll look down here instead. C makes claws, and then C and H make stitch and hut. So I just have to put in J for jug and Q for quantity, and I've finished the puzzle. And that's it. Hopefully that's all made sense, and you'll now have a good idea of what to do next time you encounter one of my puzzles in a newspaper or a book. Happy puzzling.